മൂവി ഷുഡ് റിഫ്ലക്ട് വട്ട് ഇസ് ഇൻസൈഡ് ആൻഡ് വട്ട് ഇസ് അറൗണ്ട് ഇസ് മലയാള സിനിമ ഹാസ് ഇസ് ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓഫ് എക്സ്പ്ലോറിംഗ് തീംസ് ദാറ്റ് റിഫ്ലക്ട് വെരി ഷേഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ഹ്യൂമൻ ഇമോഷൻസ് ലൈഫ് ആൻഡ് സ്റ്റേഡ് ഓഫ് എയർ സിൻസ് ഇസ് ജെനിസിസ് വിത്ത് സം ഓഫ് ദ അതർ ഇൻഡസ്ട്രീസ് ആർ സ്റ്റിൽ സ്ട്രഗ്ലിംഗ് ടു ഡു സോ ദ റൈറ്റ് വേ ഓഫ് പ്രിസേർവിംഗ് ഇൻ ആർട്ട് ഇസ് ബൈ കോൺസ്റ്റൻ്റ് റീഇൻവെൻറ്റിംഗ് ഇറ്റ് ബൈ ആസ്കിംഗ് ദ സബ്സ്റ്റാൻഷ്യൽ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ വട്ട് ഇറ്റ് മീൻസ് ടു ദ കറൻറ്റ് സോഷ്യൽ ഡിസ്കോസ് എ മൂവി ബിക്കംസ് എ മോർ ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ ആൻഡ് പേഴ്സണൽ ആൽബിനി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റുഡ് ആൻഡ് സ്റ്റഡിഡ് വിത്ത് ദ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ സൈക്കോളജി ഫിലോസഫി ആൻഡ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ഓഫ് ദ വേൾഡ് അലോങ് വിത്ത് ടൈം Today I'm going to explain a revolutionary aspect from a Malayalam movie which might give more clarity to the dreams that you want to achieve and might possibly make this world a better place. Diamond Nicholas released in the summer of 2012 tells the journey of a young doctor Arun who was living a profligate life in the city of Dubai. The movie came to us on the verge of renaissance in Malayalam cinema and it stole our hearts. But there is one prominent element in this film which should be understood deeply with our hearts to have a better philosophy about life. The life of Arun is something that everybody would dream of. He is living in the most luxurious and the tallest building on a planet at the peak of his age. He has a very reputable job. He changes his cars every now and then and he is charming especially with girls. But this story is not actually about the journey of Arun. It is about Lakshmi, Maya and Rajasri and what these three women taught him. They are the pillars of the story and what they taught Arun is the foundational lessons of life which could give us both emotional and philosophical satisfaction. Let's see how Arun is a person who lives in the tallest building in the world, Burj Khalifa, which is a striking reflection of his persona. When Venu, a person close to his family who works in the labor camp, comes to visit him and see inside the spectacular Burj Khalifa, he tries to get it off him. He has a set of standards that he has created which is very much classes where he always try to associate with the people who are in the upper social strata. Then he gets introduced to three women from different social classes who embody his different life purpose and are key in shaping the philosophy of the movie. Diamond Necklace in its essence sounds like a piece from a postmodern Malayalam literature. Its philosophical beauty is very much contemporary and valid in every civilized society. There is something that Diamond Necklace and the shelters in this movie represent which is very much influential and life-changing. In order to completely understand that, you need to ask yourself the question, what makes a life complete? What if we could watch entire lives as they unfold through time? What if we could study people from the time that they were teenagers all the way into old age to see what really keeps people happy and healthy? We did that. This is psychiatrist Robert Waldinger who is now the director of one of the longest sessions on humans called Hardwired Study of Adult Development. They track down the data from 75 years traveling through the ups and downs in the lives of a group of people to understand what makes their lives happy and healthy. After compiling the massive data, they came to a heartwarming conclusion which is very very important for this movie. Before that, we need to familiarize with the interesting concept of how a shelter would shape the philosophy of characters and your perspective of world. House or shelter in movies are the most underappreciated element which are overlooked by the audience. From the doorless home of Kumbhalingi Nights representing the economically weakened but has acceptance of cultural and gender equalities to the colorful and wondrous artifacts in Charlie's room can be identified as the character's persona. Every character in the movie Diamond Necklace is somehow mentioning a form of shelter which embodies their worldview and determines their purpose in the story. Arun lives in the most luxurious and the tallest shelter on the planet but struggles to find happiness in his life. Mr. Narayan trapped Arun into marrying Rajasri to get the share of the ancestral home which Rajasri owned. Maya who has been living all alone thus far says one interesting dialogue while being in a Mr. Broom I should have bought a small apartment building. Having a big apartment is making me realize how small my life is. This is a glimpse into an idea which the writer has tried to convey in multiple ways. In order to understand that we need to get a clarity on the imperative philosophical question and the central theme of the movie what determines a person's wealth. The essence of Diamond Necklace lies in its commentary on the effect of economy in the lives of people in different social classes. If you take a young person from an average Indian society, it is very likely that you're going to find a girl child who has societal pressure to get married around the 25 and a boy child who has societal pressure to have a job or his desires. If you take every single problems in our society from nepotism to poverty, money would play a role in determining its shape. Even in the hierarchy of necessities in an average in that family, getting a white collar job, marrying to a financially and religiously adjacent family, owning a car better than your relative, all this comes in your upper priorities and happiness or mental health earns the lower ladder. Why? 
because there are flaws in the way we define happiness. A 2010 study has found that any additional income you make above 75k dollars a year in the US isn't going to impact your day-to-day happiness. But still we think that more the money and material possession, more the happiness. We have always been taught that hard work is equal to success and success is equal to happiness. This is wrong. It is happiness is equal to hard work and hard work is equal to success. Neuroscience proves that we are hardwired to do our best when we are happy. The context of money in our society has created a class divide where the people who own money is regarded as successful and people who live in a middle or lower class family who could meet their basic needs and are having a quality relationship with their loved ones are regarded as unsuccessful and leading an unworthy way of life. The movie Diamond Necklace revolves around the idea of man's desire to get attached to us things. The ethical question that they ask is what should we get attached to? There is a character in the movie who is a patient in Arun's hospital who says that he was a successful businessman who tried to acquire mountains of wealth but in the end the only asset he had was a urine bag. There are two kinds of people in this movie. One the snobbish people who are driven by the annoying crave for money and are essentially materialistic and others who have learned to find happiness by finding their purpose. Tyler Durden from Fight Club says an interesting quote which is very important to Diamond Necklace. The things you own will end up owning you. This is where the Harvard study of Herder Dalman validates this idea. It says that an individual's social connections with family, friends or community plays a huge role in determining the trajectory of happiness and health in a person's life. They also emphasize that it is not about how many friends you have or whether you are in a committed relationship that matters, but the quality of this relationship is what is going to determine your life and they are tend to live more, stay happy and live a satisfactory life than the others. Maya is a character as Dr. Aga states the second generation kids who don't have any connections with their family apart from their parents. She was a person who was suffering from loneliness but had so much wealth along with a fiance from France but all those things were never able to give happiness to her. The only time she found happiness in life is through the good times that she had spent with Arun which affirms how quality human relations and support system could psychologically impact your mental health and that should be one of your greatest ambition and your priorities. If you look at the progression of these characters, people who are attached towards material things were struggling to cope up with changes, while people who had attachment with purpose were psychologically and emotionally were able to do it. That is why, even though Rajshri lost her ancestral home and got exposed to a totally different culture and city, love and purpose, which is free from material possession, are the things which brought happiness to her in the end. Which shows how change is an inevitable part in the life of an individual, but we should possess a sincere desire for purpose and meaning. in our life which will help us to acquire sense but there is one important thing left the heart of the movie lies in its climax sequence the unified characteristics evident in these three women materialized in this scene where maya had a conversation with a foreigner at the top of the himalayas all of ours as well as the characters problems are closely knitted with money but this movie shows that life is a process of discovering yourself through learning and unlearning In a conversation with Maya, Arun shares his motto, I'm not bothered about the past, I'm not anxious about the future, I just live in the present. This is the reason he used to convince himself to spend all his money on his luxuries which haunted him back. While the same philosophy distracts a man like Arun, when Maya rephrased it in the end, it totally had a different meaning. Why? It all comes down to the popular term carpe diem which means seize the day. You all might have familiar with this term through the Instagram bios to cheesy tattoos. This became the second name of our Daniel Jenkins. But this is the most misunderstood principle of living by people like Arun. Carpe diem literally translates pluck the day or seize the day which was first used by the Roman poet Horace in order to express that one should enjoy or embrace life while one can. The quote which Arun says is just carpe diem in disguise but the idea of carpe diem has been taken out of context by the people and it is digging their own grave. People use this principle of living in the moment to ignore everything about the future and enjoy the moment like Arun who ignored the consequence of luxuries. The love he had towards Lakshmi was true but the reason why he didn't get to marry her is because his own actions from past were haunting him and he eventually lost the control of his life because he was living by a wrong principle. In fact the word carpe diem actually means that an individual should do everything that can in the present in order to have a virtuous future. Maya was the one who understood the actual meaning of it. Even though she lost every tiny hope that she had in her life and was about to face her death soon, she decided to ignore her past and gifted the necklace to Rajshri and spend the last days of her life in the nature by seizing the final moments of her life. This is the actual carpe diem. 
to live by embracing every single possible thing in your life which will pour wisdom and sanity into your life in the future when she was at the top of the hill a foreigner approached her and asked her what makes her so detached from life and the answer was simple but it transcends so many philosophical ideas she replied with the simple sentence you think that i'm detached from life i live my life this implies that the detachment from material things is in detachment from life but it is the right form of life itself which answers the riveting question that the movie asks what should we get attached to it is nothing but life the reason why indian society pressure women to get married early on and ask guys to find a job over their desire is because the way we define happiness is both philosophically and scientifically wrong our cultural formation is not molded in a way that helps individual to seize the day if you look around all the commercials and the voices from the people around us is about the easiest way to earn money and finish first in the unwritten race of life but human values and relationships are given less importance despite the fact that it is such an essential factor in self growth and happiness so the most important things to emphasize in, in education are things like intelli- uh, uh, emotional intelligence and mental stability because the one thing that they will need for sure is the ability to reinvent themselves repeatedly Diamond Necklace is an alluring poem that awakens us to look around us. It comforts us with the line of how even a small bed in a congested labor room could put you into deep sleep if you have been sleeping in your car for weeks with your spine contracting. It inspires with the line of how including others dreams and necessities with your own ambitions will always be rewarded if you are honest. It comforts with the line of how being innocent in a world of cruelty doesn't make you worthless but the hands of the life with which everybody craves to be embraced will realize the beauty in you and will embrace you with a heart full of love. It drives the alluring line of life where it doesn't matter how terrible your past or your life is embracing the good things of the past and living the life will bring you to the sanity that nobody could ever achieve because in the end it doesn't matter how much money you want it is about how many hearts you want nimish salabha me mai tu no karu ini udaya kiran me kanaka mani uni janaladi kan Kiranam vararai 